It's not an example from the lecture notes, even though I said similar to, so I altered the example a little bit so you can take the exact example from the lecture notes and try to adjust the method I'm going to show for that example. We need to find the inverse for the matrix like this. Again, we will find this inverse without doing a single multiplication. Because we now, we now have so much knowledge about the matrix multiplication. We got lots of knowledge, especially from the previous example. example look what I'm going to do. I will make the observation like this. The beauty of the whole thing is that if I gave you this out of the blue at the beginning of the class, you said, how, how, did, he, how, how did he come up with that? But after the previous presentation, after, the previous, after that experience we gained, I don't think you will ask many questions if I say that A is this matrix. Because we, this N from the previous slide, that's, that's the value of it. You see, remembering that matrix for this example, I can write something like this. And not only I can write something like this, I can say even more. I can continue this line. I can continue this line by saying something like this. I can continue this line indefinitely. Because all of these powers of n are zeros. So by adding them, I don't change, I don't change anything. But by adding them, I, will, I can identify some pattern here, can I? This is the sum of the powers of some fixed matrix. It's a geometric progression formula. This progression formula, if I have a sum of the, imagine this, uh, Q is a number. If Q is a number, it's a something from the elementary and actually from the high school. If, you, if Q is a number, and if you have sum of the powers of this Q, if Q is a number in absolute value, in absolute value less than one, of course, otherwise this sum will not converge. If you sum these powers of Q, you know how to compute x. That's the geometric progression formula. Meaning that if you're wondering what will be the inverse of x, that will be the inverse of x, isn't it? It's something I draw from my experience with numbers. Now, if I project this back onto matrices, here I have a matrix which stands in the position of x, which is the sum of the powers of the fixed matrix, like fixed Q, matrix I, N. If I need the inverse of this, why don't I try this matrix? Like just, project, just modeling from this example. Why don't I just try this matrix? Whether, maybe it will work for the inverse. Here's my Q, this Q. Here's my identity. Here it is. You should realize this is not a justification that the inverse will be like this. It is not. It just supplies me the idea that the inverse might be like so. Might be. How, how am I going to convince you the inverse is exactly like so? Easy. After I have the idea, I can scrap all of that. I don't know all of this. I don't need all of this. After I have the idea, all I have to do, I have to test this product. If, by any chance, this product will return identity, that will be enough evidence to conclude that x my chosen x, the way I chose it, is the inverse of A. Let's just test this. Here's the product. If I do the expansion, if I expand this bracket and this bracket, here's the expansion. Here's the complete expansion. Look what happens with this expansion. This one cancels with this. This one cancels with this. This one's simply zero. So it is identity. It is identity. If you take the if you try the product in the other way, did I try the product? Yes, I did try the product. If I try the product in the other way, and if I do the expansion, that will also be identity for the same reasons. Is the expansion. Again, this one cancels with this, this one cancels with this, and this one simply zero. And we have identity. So this is truly, this is truly the inverse we're looking for. 